What's up and welcome back to Gabe at Miller Music. Today I'm going to be showing you what went into the making of some sample based beats on the MPC-1. And I'm getting those samples from Tracklib, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Tracklib is an online record store with over 80,000 songs and multi-tracks to choose from and more being added in multiple different genres. You can dig through it like it's a record store, find stuff to sample and chop up and flip, and then get that stuff licensed easily and properly. So you get real songs to sample and the artists you sample get paid. I'll link to the tracks that I sampled for the beats in this video in the description below, as well as a special link that you can use that will get you a 30 day free trial that you can cancel at any time, as well as 15 free download credits. That being said, Let's get into it. Finding songs on Tracklib is super straightforward and they give you a lot of options for narrowing down your search. You can do it by genre or even subgenre, what era of music it's from, or whether multi-tracks are available. So I just spent a bunch of time perusing, trying to find something that made my ears perk up and anything that did, I would add to my favorites and then I eventually downloaded the stuff that I wanted to go ahead and flip. With that out of the way, let's jump into the MPC. Let's start off with a lo-fi hip hop beat. A lot of these are gonna follow a fairly similar format, so I'll start to breeze through them after a bit once you get the idea. And then I'll spend a bit more time on the house beat because that one's a bit different in the way that I've set it up. I've got some machine kits loaded up here. And I've got this uh, side chain to the kick. And then I've got another one, adding some percussion. That's played in completely unquantized, just getting that groove in there. This third track is also a machine group, and I've got just two sounds on here that I'm using. I just like loading up groups and then trying stuff out with different combinations and seeing what works. Helps me get into the flow a little bit faster. And also this sound has a spring reverb on it, which is why it sounds the way that it does. So let me get to this fourth track, which is the sample track. So a few things going on here. First of all, I chopped this up using sample edit and I just started hitting pads to lay uh, vague chops out on the pads. And then I was able to dial those in further after the fact. From there, it was just a matter of finding main large changes that I wanted to incorporate to build up my own progression. That was just trial and error. So here are the chops by themselves. This pad is interesting as well because it is reversed. That just worked better for the vibe I was going for. And uh, I should also mention that this holds out for quite a while because it's got that nice guitar lick in there. And this is all from the intro of the song. I literally just loaded the entire song onto the SD card and then into the active memory and then chopped out the part that I wanted and then chopped that up. And in this case, I cherry picked it from the intro because there weren't really any drums. I'm sure there's a bunch of great sample material later on in the song as well, but I really wanted to focus in on the intro. Once I side chained all of this to the kick and added some reverb, that is the full beat. Up next, we've got another lo-fi beat with a pretty similar setup, except this one's even simpler. This is another machine kit. That I played in completely unquantized. And then I was able to start chopping the sample to fit what this groove was doing. And this is a very similar case where I just loaded in the whole song and kind of cherry picked the intro. I almost want to take another pass at this sample because it's so good. But I ended up picking some pretty small and specific chops and I'd love to see what I could do with this sample given a little more time because it's fantastic. So let me go ahead and mute this. Baby, baby, I know. 
So it sounds like a bit of a mess without the drums because I've side chained it to the kick and that kind of covers up some of my weird timing imperfections. So let me unmute that again. And then on top of that, I have this bass. Which is with the uh, bass line plugin. Just a simple little distorted sine wave bass. Doing this little uh, bass slide. And then just following the overall melody of the sample chop. This sample is so good that I kind of feel like I shouldn't be allowed anywhere near it because I'm a big dumb idiot. But hopefully I was able to kind of do it justice. Um, there's another sample that's, once again, so good that I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to flip it. We'll get to that in a little bit. Changing vibes entirely. Up next, we have my Vapor Trap beat. I really like how this one turned out. This is a little more in my normal kind of production wheelhouse. So once again. We've got uh, a machine kit laid out on these pads. And a couple things to note. For one thing, I have this kick triggering the side chain and I didn't want those kick rolls to all trigger the side chain. So. I use this second kick, which has a bit less low into it and is not triggering the side chain for the kick rolls. And that is the built-in hi-hat ratchet. And I've got this little velocity thing going with the hi-hat. Layered on top of that. Another machine kit, in this case. I've distorted this kick to hell and back and then cut a bunch of low end so it acts as a nice little layer. And then I've got this extra higher hi-hat playing pretty fast with some extra hi-hat ratchets to keep things a little bit more high energy and a little more interesting. And then I've got this extra element that I've tuned to match the sample. So let's get into the sample next. So rather than going for some vintage jazz or funk or disco or anything like that, I went for some modern electronic music. Like this was released in the last few years, I believe. And I was able to take that and flip it into kind of a vaporwave vibe. This is like some ambient type cinematic music. It's got all these really nice little synth swells. And so once again, I just loaded the entire song into here, clipped out the section that I wanted, and then chopped it up. And then just had to try to find a chord progression. And I think the original flip that I did had way too much going on. And so then it was just a matter of paring it down until it had a nice progression to it. Because I'm trying to build up a chord progression, but not just steal the original chord progression. And so that just took some trial and error to figure out. And it was a back and forth. So I got a basic chop going on this and then came up with some drums and then refined the chop to work better with the drums and then added more drums. All of that together, like you have briefly heard. Like I mentioned, uh, the chop is sidechained to the kick and I've got some reverb on it as well. Very similar to the others in format, just sounds super different. Up next, bass. This is an 808 sample that I've mapped to a key group program. And I do have a little bit of tube drive on it and I've side chained it to the kick of it. Which does change up the feel of it somewhat. And that's serving a couple of purposes. Not only is it adding the much needed low end and the genre convention of the big boomy 808, but it's also helping the chord progression make a little bit more sense. It's really forcing it into a more uh, simple, rigid format. And finally, we've got this synth right here. Let me unmute that. Yeah. 
this is the patch that kind of sold me on the tube synth plugin a little bit. It's a preset ultra evil. I don't think I did a whole lot to modify it. And it's got this really nice slidey glide to it that ended up just floating over the mix pretty nicely. And that's a lot of fun. A little over the top, but a lot of fun. But I have saved the best for last. This is by far the thing I'm the most proud of. So let me play this all the way through and then I will get into the individual elements. This is the other case of a sample that is so damn good that I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to touch it. Like it's sacrilegious for me to try to flip it. Hopefully I've been able to do it justice though. I really like how this one turned out. So let me jump into the individual elements. I should mention this is one of those cases where I was able to get my hands on a multi-track, which Tracklib does have quite a few of. And I was able to get a version with the isolated vocal. And I think what's fun about this is like the keep on going bit is not the main hook of the song. There's like a whole other hook that the song has. And I very purposefully ignored that and found a different hook hiding within a verse, which I think is cool. And it really works for this vibe that I'm going for. So let me pull up this first track. In this case, no machine kits. I just loaded in samples as I needed them. I've got the kick tuned to the key of the song, and I've also got a bit of distortion on it. And of course, it's triggering uh, the ducker. Super simple clap. Uh, these are all from my $5 sample pack, by the way. Snare. A bunch of little elements for little bits of ear candy, wherever they would fit in the pocket of this swung groove. I want to have this kind of static beat just doing its thing, and then a bunch of little bits of percussion interjecting themselves, essentially. This is a Jeremy Blake sound, I believe. And these little uh, bass shots and wubs. And I had a few different basses I was trying out, and I ended up moving that all to its own uh, key group program. But once again, I've got these little bass fills just to really try to bring this to life. So let's move on to the next track, which is the vocal track. Keep on going without, keep on going. I'm going to cut that off right now because it'll just keep going. I just load them all into a drum track and called it a day. In this case, I didn't load the entire vocal into the MPC itself. I just chopped them out in Reaper, lined them up to the grid, made sure that was all good to go so I could really easily bring them in and just trigger them right when they need to start. And then I've got some processing on here uh, with EQ reverb and delay. So let me turn that stuff off. Keep on going without looking back. Just to elevate that a bit, give it some nice polish. So that just floats over the top of the mix. And then I built everything around it and tried to match uh, the groove and the feel and of course the pitch as much as possible. Let me go into the next track. So the bass changes up to match the vocal in that part, and that's the big turnaround uh, to let you loop the drop cleanly. And this is just a bass one shot. Mapped to the keyboard, and I have gone in, once again, ducked it to the kick and added a bit of reverb to kind of bring it to life a bit. Make it sound a little bit less just like a static analog bass sample. So let me go back to the previous section where the full vocal verse is. I'm gonna mute the vocal for now. Same drums as before, but we add this electric piano. And in this case, I'm using the chord engine. And this is the electric piano plugin, which sounds really nice. This thing is one of the better plugins in here. And I also really like the drum plugin. I'll get to that in a future video. 
Also side chain to the kick, just playing a chord progression that follows the vocal as closely as possible, or at least it's my interpretation of what the chord progression under the vocal should be. I deliberately didn't listen to the instrumental as much as possible so that I could try to come up with something that just seemed like it would fit. And then I just had the bass line follow it and then jump around either octaves or notes that are contained within the chords. That is the basics of this track. From here, I would definitely go in and spend some time on song structure, probably just export what I've got so far into individual tracks, bring that into my DAW, and really flesh it out uh, into a full song structure. If you would like to check out Tracklib for yourself, be sure to hit up the link in the description. And if you'd like to see some more MPC1 videos, you can click or tap up over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.